Hi, my name is Alex Mahan, and I am with Justin Shirk today, and we will be presenting scleroderma, also known as progressive systemic sclerosis. Scleroderma can be defined as an autoimmune disorder in which healthy tissue is attacked, causing a buildup of collagen in the skin and connective tissues. It has been suggested that scleroderma is not the result of one etiology, but rather is multifactorial. Heredity and occupational exposures to pollutants and other chemicals may be possible risk factors. While most cases only involve the skin, more advanced systemic problems can coalesce where blood vessels and the digestive tract are affected. Clinical symptoms of scleroderma cases only involving the skin will manifest as positive Raynaud's phenomenon, hardening and thickening of the hands and face, as well as tightness and stiffness of these same locations. Systemic scleroderma will yield joint pain, esophageal reflux, and difficulty swallowing. Serostomia will also be present in a majority of the cases. While the disease presents itself in many forms, it has been shown that circulating antibodies can be detected in more advanced cases. Clinically, the oral cavity can show several signs of the progression of the disease. Over time, the tongue and buccal mucosa can become increasingly fibrous. The oral cavity will also have restricted opening over time as the collagen infiltrates the tendons and muscles of mastication. Scleroderma tends to first manifest itself in the third to fifth decade of life, typically affecting more females than males. It is quite rare, affecting only around 2 to 20 million people per year. While radiographic evidence of systemic scleroderma can be found throughout the body, Indications in the head and neck tend to present with mandibular erosion and widened PDL space. The erosion tends to occur at the mandibular angles, coronoid process, and condyles. These osseous resorption locations correspond to sites of muscle attachments. Both cases are more prevalent with increased severity of systemic scleroderma. The first significant radiographic finding that we will see in scleroderma is mandibular erosion. Mandibular erosion can occur bilaterally at the angles of the mandible, coronoid process, and condyles. It is also sometimes present in the digastric region of the mandible. Mandibular erosion has a well-defined edge, however no defined shape. The internal aspect of the lesion is radiolucent. Other structures that it could affect are the inferior border of the mandible, the TMJ, and the inferior alveolar nerve. Multiple lesions are present in severe systemic disease cases. The size of the lesions can be small to large depending on the severity of the case. The next radiographic finding that we will present is a widened PDL space. Widened PDL space is generalized to the majority of the dentition in scleroderma. The edge is well defined and the shape follows the contour of the roots, and it is usually larger than a half a millimeter in width. The internal aspect is radiolucent. Other structures can be affected by the widened PDL space. This includes cortical bones surrounding the root, which is resorbed as the PDL increases in size. There will most likely be multiple widened PDL spaces throughout the dentition. The size of the PDL space is usually greater than a half a millimeter in width, which is about two to four times wider than normal. Clinically, scleroderma may resemble other disease processes, such as mixed connective tissue disease and graft versus host disease. However, none of these disease processes present as a differential diagnosis radiographically in the head or neck region. The following differentials should be considered based upon the widened PDL space observed on a dental radiograph. Tooth mobility as a result of trauma or periodontal disease can show as a widened PDL space, but is most often localized. Scleroderma usually presents as a generalized bilateral PDL space widening, but most often patients will not have mobile teeth. In orthodontic tooth movement, bone remodeling occurs during this movement and may present with widened PDL space during and also shortly after treatment. However, with orthodontic appliances, the PDL space will be narrowed on the side that the tooth is being pulled to and widened on the opposite side. 
Scleroderma pdl widening will occur evenly around the root. In osteosarcoma, the PDL space is widened in the teeth located around the lesion. However, the lamina dura does not remain intact. In scleroderma, the lamina dura remains intact and usually occurs in more than one quadrant. A final interpretation of scleroderma cannot be based upon radiographic findings alone. Though, it is common to present with mandibular erosion and widened PDL space on radiographs, clinical signs and laboratory tests are essential in determining a definitive diagnosis. While there is no definitive treatment for scleroderma, medications can be prescribed to help manage complications of the disease. The proper chemotherapeutic action is dependent on the severity of the skin and the organs involved. One course of action is to provide the patient with blood pressure medications, such as ACE inhibitors or calcium channel blockers, to reduce circulation complications. Secondly, analgesics may be prescribed to help ease the pain associated with stiff joints and difficulty in swallowing. The final treatment option is to provide immunosuppressants such as methotrexate or D-penicillamine. These medications help reduce the effects of circulating autoantibodies and lessen the symptoms of the disease. If the disease is suspected upon examination and has not been diagnosed, the patient should be referred to their primary care physician for management and for future treatment options. The primary care physician will be able to order blood draws and radiographs of the lungs to determine the severity and the stage of the disease. While systemic management of the disease is not in the spectrum of care for dental professionals, the patient's oral health can be improved and managed through regularly scheduled dental appointments and comprehensive patient education. The aristomia is a common symptom of scleroderma, which can put a patient at an increased risk for plaque, caries, and periodontal disease. So it is essential that the patient have excellent at-home oral health. Sugar-free candy, artificial saliva, and increased intake of water should also be recommended to the patient. As the disease progresses and sclerodactyly develops, it is important that the oral hygiene aids such as electric toothbrushes, flossing aids, and water picks are provided to the patient. Characteristic clinical findings of scleroderma include hardening and thickening of the skin, Raynaud's phenomena, xerostomia, and restricted mouth opening. Characteristic radiographic findings include bilateral mandibular erosion at muscle attachment sites. These include the angle of the mandible, the coronary process, and the condyles. Significant widening of the PDL spaces occurs throughout the entire dentition. The best treatment option that a dental professional can provide is to help maintain the oral health of the patient. This can be accomplished by providing the patient with regular periodontal treatment, eliminating active caries, and other periodontal disease through the restorative and endodontic therapy, but most importantly, by educating the patient how to properly maintain superb at-home oral hygiene.